Oh, bonjour, mes amis. Hello there. So France is considered one of the strongest nations in game, right? So it's not really challenging to play it. That's why Paradox Interactive came up with an achievement which is considered very hard and with this big blue blob. But according to my community poll, to around 20% of you already did it. So is it really very hard? I don't think so. That's why today with the power of the Napoleon, we're gonna go and try not doing big blue blob, but double big blue blob. Enjoy, mes <laughs> Uh -huh. oh, let's start with the estates and over here I'm gonna go obviously and take the power points from each of them one two and three Then I'm gonna death my promises once with diplo point I'm gonna sell the titles for additional funds I like money then I'm gonna summon the diet to increase Bergeo's influence to get bigger death cost actual mission to death with production i'm gonna dev it once within a month tick with diplo but first i'm gonna dev it with my meal point and Sisland to keep it on five percent then from clergy this is gonna be a key history privilege plus 25 relations with every catholic country we'll need it a lot for our plans why from the nobility i'm gonna go and uh, take the plus 14 percent manpower because we have such a big land control of them i'm gonna set up rivals which is gonna be for now only england then i'm gonna go and ally castile we don't really need to guarantee scotland as i'm gonna destroy england very soon and i'm gonna also break my lands provence which i'm gonna defeat in some time now ally burgundy as well we are just on our alliances limit and uh, we are gonna get our troops ready to go and fight Gribitan right away. Why with our fleet, I'm gonna start building two additional cocks and two galleys. So we'll be able to fight a special enemy very soon. Of course, before I attack England, I should send an insult for additional PP. And then in next month, I will attack them. But this has to be a good insult. May your sky be filled with the comets. <laughs> Perfection. And change my focus to admin because we'll be spending a lot of power points on coring our provinces. Trust me. I'll also rival Aragon because it's a rival of Castile already. So we might try sneakily go and attack Aragon together with them because later they will anyway end up in a union probably. So I can at least take some lands here over here for myself. For our vassals, and we will have to start improving relations with them. But for those with the least of liberty desire, I'm gonna already start diverting trade to increase our own income. Hello, I like money. And we just need to declare on England. That's gonna be conquest of Maine because it doesn't have any forts. So it's gonna be the easiest one. And on the 16th, we can go and attack. Tick. Let's go. Start sitting down and everything. And that's gonna be quick and easy war for us. Of course, all of the vassals will get the siege attitude, so they'll help us sieging these provinces down. Why are we going to minimize spending of our manpower on this war? Portugal is having 15,000 of troops. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and hire free company to make it easier. Now I can also boost my stability to one and get the advisors. But it's gonna be level two advisor over here because he's 50% cheaper to maintain. <gasps> First, let's just gonna go and uh, take the cheaper advisors over, of course, from the estate. So also hiring those advisors will be cheaper. Then over here, I also have a cheaper advisor on Diplo and I don't have a cheaper advisor for Mill. So I'm just gonna go and take the morale guy here. Unfortunately, as they have a big advantage on the navy over us, they can just freely go around with their troops, land here, land there, and we don't have much control over it. And now I'm getting engaged over here. So let me go and try reinforcing this battle by keeping some troops on the siege. Hold your ground. Actually, I'm gonna. Yeah, keep these guys here. Now, of course, England is landing in Bordeaux with the 4.9k troops. So go around. I'm gonna also keep consolidating my manpower troops because as I'm gonna lose some manpower and consolidate my troops, I'll also make more mercs because uh, we're just gonna free our force limit. They are sieging down Narbonne, but I don't think I have to fight them. I have defensive attack here and they don't have any siege general. I have general with free siege, so I'm just gonna go and siege down Portugal instead of trying to fight them over here. Okay, now with 75% of the war score, I can take all of my cores, which is pretty much no AE, and Palais, so I will be having 
a place to expand inside the British Isles, so into the Scotland and into Ireland. Sick. Now with my manpower troops, I should consolidate. This way, we're having enough space to go and recruit the Grand Company, which was five targets monthly, but that won't be big of a problem for us. And we got missions, so it's called Reconquer Gascony, that's more claims. Reconquer Normandy, that's also more claims. That's also more crownlands. Finally, it's the 100 years war event, which is giving us one stability and 50 admin points, thanks to which we have free stability right now. So that's gonna be useful when we want to go and do no CB wars. Really? They asked me to release advance of Alencon? No! God, please, no! No! No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's also gonna hurt us, but that's fine. By the way, remember our mission for deving the province? Let me dev this province right now. One, two, turn this off. And that's additional 80 ducats that we'll be having to do the control the lands. And I probably should have first stated those two. But it doesn't change that much. Okay, let's get ready because we are gonna go and get into two wars. So we get a leader here, and we need 10,000 troops, have enough money to get a doctrine before it's gonna be even more expensive, and that's gonna be chance to capture enemy ships. And I'm gonna go and take the 1% loans over here. By the way, we have 11 of crownlands now. Let's declare the war, they are gonna have more troops than me over here so we have to come with more in a second declare the war it's gonna hurt but we are still at zero stability after this and i could boost it but there's no sense in that and moria is just a hundred defenders so i'm just gonna maybe go straight to moria because i should i wouldn't be able to land there anyway in one month but i should be able to bridge the walls and rush these forts right away and then i'm gonna bring additional six thousand troops from this free company to make sure we win this war but we don't have enough cannons in the ships to bridge it that's unfortunate thankfully Ottomans attack kandar so they won't be busy with byzantium yet. So, okay have time to just gather my troops around here or yet now i can go and try separate piecing serbia to just take some gold for them and then i'm gonna go and take down constantinople as i'm busy in byzantium and i can't control ireland yet this is not a big problem we'll be having plenty of time for that i'm slowly building my claims or around to just be ready for the war and this is the technology that I can take admin one innovativeness is gonna be useful i just carried favors on castile up to 10 which allows me to declare war on aragon and call them into it from aragon i pretty much want the low developed islands because it's not much ae for them and at the same time provinces that we need right so far we are having these provinces on 28 so that's not even close to our goal Britannians allied to them but I'm just gonna separate piece them and maybe I'll take Alcante as well to get claim on Granada so I'll be able to declare on them very soon so let me just declare while we are still fighting with both Byzantium and Aragon we cannot slow down this is why I should be attacking someone else and that someone else is most probably gonna be Provence and looking at the amount of the armies that they're bringing that shouldn't be big of a problem so let me just declare over here in this stack I have come on my vassals attached come on okay so I'm gonna wipe the army right away it's gonna be big and a nice advantage now we just have to siege this down so Aragonese war is gonna be pretty much won by Castilians for us by myself I focus on the war with Provence or around here Last Justin tournament for the next 20 years is gonna be very, very important. You know what? To end the war of Aragon, I only need Rusilion. And there are 1.9 thousand defenders, with we just breached the walls here. I think I'm gonna risk rushing this fort, because this is a Merc stack. Let me start rushing, go speed 3, and let's see. 14,000 troops? Yeah, I think it shouldn't be a big problem, looking how much troops I'm losing each, each day. Yep, <laughs> 12 and a half. This is how strong uh, rushing the forts in this patch is. Okay, they're accepting right now. I could drag this war for a longer time, but it's December. So in January, I guess expansion that I'll get from this war is gonna already decrease a little bit on the countries. Can I take war reparations as well? I do, and just a little bit of the ducats. So that's just perfect. Send the peace deal. French Italy, yes, Italy. And we already have 34 provinces. At the same time, you see that I have troops ready in islands to go and attack someone. Let me just go after these guys and call Neister as a co-belligent. So we're gonna make sure to also go and rush down her island right now. With Constantinople down, we can right now go and fast them because unfortunately I don't have the coring range. 
over here. So I can only vassalize, take full money on top of that. And we'll have to start improving relations with them, obviously. And that got us into the war with Epirus because just, they just attacked Byzantium. So that's even more perfect. What is unfortunate is that Provence got excommunicated, but after we declared with them. If this was earlier, we would get far less against expansion for different castles belly. Okay, Mr. Provence, I want all of my claims. It's gonna be some against expansion, but you can see half of these countries won't be able to join the collision after the month tick, because this is gonna be January. So let me just take this, some war reparations on top of that, and as much money as you're gonna accept. This way, we are already having 40 of provinces. Concentrate the development and core all of the provinces that we just conquered. So Paris this way is having already 30 death, which is very useful for this. For now I'm not gonna piss out Irish because there's too many Europeans that joined the coalition because of this. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and attack Ottomans because they have issues already with another war against Venice and the others. So I'm just declare. Let's do the reconquest of Gelibolo, Korkas, Til, and this stack is gonna right away gonna go and siege down this. So this way, Ottomans won't be able to cross the strait and they need to bring more troops. I black flag these guys, so let me just get them here as well. Where are the Ottoman forts? How strange. There's nobody here. There's no fort in Stalinic, there's no fort in Shugla, there's no fort in... They deleted most of the forts. And now I believe that most of the troops is gonna be here. So I'm just gonna go this way to just see where they are. Well, I'd love to get restoration in Casablanca and Milan, but they have so much development. It's not worth in our goal right here. We'll just be killed by the aggressive expansion. I'm gonna get this CB just in case, but I don't think I'm gonna use it. War of Ottomans is like super easy because they have plenty of enemies that are helping me all the time. The only issue is that they're also occupying some provinces. So for example, I can't take too high in the peace deal. And let me see... Why is nobody trying to help me in this battle? But because even if the same number of troops, we are easily winning with them. And this is just Merc stack, so I'm not even losing any manpower in this kind of the battles. I can also right now take Admin Tech. That's gonna cost us 660, that's because we don't have Renaissance. But I want to take it ACP to unlock the first idea group, which is gonna be for sure diplomatic and diplomat is a good starter i just died the new one is 512 completely trash but i can't really afford this inheriting him when this guy is 53 years old my first guarantee form is of course gonna be the tax no 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 it's just gonna be manpower which we of course need so right now the max manpower is gonna be not 38 but 43,000, and i think it's time to piss out ottomans we're taking war operations all of those cores of Byzantium, taking those three princes for myself to get border with Karaman, and on top of that, a few ducats just to maximize the gains. AE is not that much, so let me then piece them out. This is beautiful. And I'm gonna start coring one province here because for this I don't have the coring range. If you go to regions, you see that this is all considered Europe. So those provinces will be also important. So currently, we are already having 46 of the provinces. With this peace deal, it's not gonna be much of aggressive expansion and we're gonna clear most of the island. So now we take time not only to decrease our autonomy in our provinces, not only to decrease some aggressive expansion, but also, yes, get the borders here fixed thanks to taxation with the vassals. Now if I wanted to eat our land, that would be 5 points monthly and that would take 6 years. But, first of all, I'm gonna use Papacy to decrease the diplomatic annexation cost, so this way it's gonna end in January 1463. The other vassals will take way less to be annexed. That's why I'm gonna do it step by step. Right now I started doing this with the biggest vassal, then I'm gonna do the second biggest, third biggest, so I'm gonna annex three vassals at the same time while keeping one additional diplomat to do the other things. Castile called me to war with Granada, which is bad news because I'm stuck, I can't start annexing another vassal, but it's also good news because there's crusade against Tunis, which is giving me tax, meta, moral of armies, manpower, prestige and papal influence. And as we are at war anyway, I'm gonna go and attack Kandar, which is gonna get me Crimea into the war. So look, I'm gonna break the alliance of Kazan, Nogai, I'm gonna take Kuban to get borders over here. So thank you so much. My from Kandar, we are gonna go and fully annex him. It's not calculated perfectly, but look at this. Our land is gonna finish in December 62. 
Fua is gonna finish in April 63 and this guy will finish in September 63. So more or less around the same time and currently I'm losing 12 Diplo points monthly. Also my truce with Aragon just ended. I'm there's a risk that they're gonna join my coalition. So avoid that to happen. I will prove relations with Venice so they can't join. And then I'm gonna attack Aragon, but only for money where operations because look at this, I guess, expansion. I also need to attack Rabazin to avoid them from joining the coalition. So let me just go and attack. And this is gonna be a slow war because I only have mercs around here. And I declared Sligo as it joined the coalition to get rid of Genoa. So I'm stopping them from joining it together. Orlan is now down. Now we wait for the others, which are still annexing. Three and three months so is still fine. My ruler just died, so we're right now at 512 guy. Which I'll have to change focus for Diplo as soon as possible. From Aragon, as promised, I'm actually gonna take my war goal, which is Rusillion. War operations. It will be good to peace out. Tick, tick, tick. And now I got this event. If only I got it like 15 years ago, that would be far better. But it's still fine. I'm not gonna click it right now. I'm just gonna let it click in three months because I'm not pissing out anything anytime soon. Maybe I'll just do a click it before pissing out Ramazem. And but that's it. Armania Kistam also finished. And this makes our borders far more beautiful. And currently we don't have that many provinces, but we are slowly increasing that. Right now it's 69, so very nice. But remember, we have plenty of provinces in Byzantium and other verses over here. Why we keep expanding into different directions at the same time. The second bonus I'm gonna take from Papas is obviously the improved relations one. And this is a problem. 3 to 1 air. Like for real. Of course I have to disinherit this guy. It's 50 prestige hurts so much. Hey look, I'm like, oh no, they are sieging down this fort over here. So I just took my troops, assigned them to the ships and I'm doing this kind of landing. So that's an easy one. This might... Ooh, that's nice air. This might be even a stack wipe with good rolls. No, it's not. There goes institution. Let me embrace the renaissance and I can take the sixth admin take and seven is coming. This is something that... Oh, tax meta is always useful. It's not changing much. I could sell my institution to Castile, but they don't want to accept it because of my diplomatic reputation. So let me take a loan. It's gonna be an investment. Change this guy to diplomatic reputation guy. Now I can go to economy, offer the knowledge sharing, and that's gonna be 2.6 ducats monthly. So that's definitely worth it. I'm also gonna take a few loans, repay the 1% loans, which are very little to what I can take already. Now take the 1% loans instead, and repay the 4% loans. So we are clean, and we are still having 700 ducats of positive treasury. Okay, Steam Mr. Scotland. If I just fully annex them, I wouldn't be able to release them because those provinces are not their culture. It's Highlander, you can see, it is Norwegian, so that wouldn't work. Instead of that, I'm gonna go only to take this province for ourselves and make them our vassal. And on top of that, take money, that's no aggressive expansion. Very perfect, of course, they're not gonna be very loyal at the beginning. <laughs> but once I start feeding them with the provinces from Great Britain, they're gonna be far better. As I don't have that much aggressive expansion here, it's time to go and into England for the course of Scotland. I'm just getting my troops all around here. I have some slots for the diplomatic relations. Actually, two slots. I'm gonna go and ally Lithuania. Okay, let's do this. You can see Ottoman troops are all in Anatolia, so I'm gonna declare them. But that's gonna be for the conquest of a province here. So let me declare. Ships are gonna block him. I'm gonna go and carpage the European lands first. While it war over here, we are not slowing it down. Let me go and attack England. And over here, Burgundy would help me, but he has some debt. So what if we repay his debt, attack England, call Burgundy, Castile, that's gonna be a big advantage on our side, and that's gonna be reconquest on Inverness, and let's go straight and kill them. England is attack 4, while we attack 6, so I think if we try fighting them over here, that might be even a stack wipe, but we would need to roll very nicely, which is actually not happening, so it's not big of a problem. And let me go and try fighting these guys on the other hand. So they have so many troops all around. 
But yeah, yeah, the army quality, the tech difference is doing everything. Like, the difference between tech 4 and tech 6 is just such an enormous. I'm also thinking, because I have both bonuses that I need here for a couple of more years, I thinking about investing into Papacy, because there is a chance we'll take it over. So let me just go 1, 2, 3, and 4. And let's just now have the Queen Eagles crossed. All of the Scottish cores are 58% the war score. On top of that, I'm just gonna go and take a few provinces additional for myself. Maybe let's go and take a fort here. So I'm taking all of the forts. We go this way. That's Noaga's expansion. Send the peace deal. And soon we'll be annexing them. We should be also annexing Byzantium ASAP to finish the annexation before 1500. But at the same time, I also need this diplomatic reputation in improve relations. I'm gonna do the old gold streak on the Ottomans where they think that they're gonna run away through the strait. So of course I'm letting them do that. I'm gonna do what's called a pro gamer move. But the moment they start going through it, now, I'm gonna take my ships out of the port, so they can't move anywhere, and now, I'm gonna go and attack, I'll win this barely actually, but if I do it again, tick, 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 come on, come on, just win it, and do it again. That's a wipe. So this should be also more likely to accept the peace. I want to take those princes to block Bulgaria, so after the rebels get here, they might break free, and I also want to do the same around here, but you see that's not enough. Maybe instead of that, I'll block them over here by just taking one province of Sivas. And aggressive expansion is not that big. Let me just go and piece them out. Send the peace deal. Bliatiful. By the way, you are the first great power for over a thousand of great power score already. But we are just getting started. Oh, 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 this is, yes, the Granada and Separatist great adventure going from multiplayer to eh and somewhere in the Europe while trying to get back to their home. Oh, no! Anyway, anyway, it's time to attack Denmark for this province over here. Sick. I just hope that they will not engage with their navy because their navy is theoretically bigger, but not that much. And Burgundy actually like to help us. Let's do this. They might help us in the land over here. My second idea group, I'm thinking between admin for additional co-creation cost and quantity for more actual manpower to deal with our troops. And honestly, in this case, I think that quantity is gonna be more useful because I don't have that much and we managed to even get this bonus. This improved relations is something that we really need. And thanks to that, what's our general bonus? Plus 90%, I think that's fairly decent. This little peace deal with Denmark is letting me take 14 provinces. And I, it's, it seems weird, but I took the lowest developed provinces in this. So that's 44 expansion and very cheap to court. They send it. This is just beautiful. Now I can claim Novgorod and right away go and declare a war on them. So we're gonna also minimize amount of the rebels coming from those provinces. And by minimize, I mean there will be absolutely no rebels. I know it's not the most efficient because Britain is having well developed provinces. See, it's all around 10, but it's fine. It's just 13 other expansion, which doesn't hurt us that much. And we want to keep our borders clean, right? And that was the biggest goal over here. And that allows me to become an empire in 1482, which means that we crossed 1000 of our own development. And that's 122 of our own provinces. Why are we having around 30 or even more in Byzantium and Scotland? There it goes. Not only two diplomatic reputation, but of course, Elan itself, so we are running around 4.5 morale of armies. My air is only 331, but honestly, at this point, it doesn't really matter. We only have 17 years of gameplay left, and King is 16 years old. Oh my god, I declared on Hungary to get me border with Bulgaria, Serbia, and Bosnia. <sighs> Look what happened. They just became junior part of Denmark, which is bad news because we have to fight right now Denmark and Sweden, but it's also good news because it's gonna shorten my truce with them. That allows me to call Poland into the war, that allows me to call Lithuania into the war, and that allows me to call Bohemia into the war, so I guess we're gonna have some fun. This is it, border of this nation that I mentioned, two provinces from Sweden, the law was developed. Now with this, we are already having 132 provinces and I need to go and start annexing Scotland. I just calculated that together with Scotland and Byzantium, so if I assume that I'm gonna have enough time to eat them, 
We are having 160 provinces right now, so you're missing only 40 of them. To make the things even faster, I'm gonna go and improve three centers of trade to level 2 to get the golden era. Let's take two loans, upgrade to level 2, upgrade to level 2, and upgrade to level 2. Embrace the gold era, and now what I notice the issue is, as I have Diplotech free, because all the annexation and other stuff, I actually don't even have coring range to call those princes yet, so I'm just scoring this step by step. That's a big issue actually that we are having right here. Because even if I attack Muscovy, I won't be having coring range to take care of them. Let's see how quickly I can shorten the annexation of Scotland. It's gonna be February 96, but let me do this. Tick. That's April 95, and they are still loyal. Let me do this. This is April 94. They are still loyal, and I could do the same on Byzantium, but that would make them this loyal. So I'm just leaving this option for later. I think this is gonna be the last worthy Thomas that we're gonna do. Call Lithuanian Poland to help us here, so I'm gonna finish it ASAP. So in a year we are gonna, or in, in two years probably, or in three years we're gonna go after England and after those guys. Now, as I don't want to slow down annexation of Scotland by half from 6 to 3. I'm just gonna start diverting from, from Byzantium. This is gonna just stop on 80%. Even at the very end, I'll turn it on again. And this way, we are saving more Diplo points right now. And we are annexing Scotland with the full speed. Issue with my Ottoman peace deal are the Diplo points that I'm gonna lose. It's 100 minus 20. We're gonna regain these power points quickly. Send this peace deal. And start calling those prisons. That's of course... <laughs> enormous amount of our extension because we're still calling the provinces in Scandinavia but it's fine and we are currently at 148 provinces already we need more provinces that's why I'm taking those three from Great Ort we don't need more and this allows me to make a claim on Strakhan the same time declaring war Muscovy this point is gonna help so it's not gonna be that bad and let's go for the conquest of Novgorod send these guys here these guys will unite in a second, and I'm gonna come from the soul. As at the end, it will be all about having enough power points to core the provinces. I'm gonna already, already change my focus to admin to be able to do that. <laughs> Burgundian succession just has happened, and Burgundy is right now junior part of ours. <laughs> Doesn't change much for what we are going for over here, but it's changing our the great part of Scots is 1.0. 5,000 right now. By the way, we should take care of the Burger and pretend the rebels because if they enforce, we lose the union, but we don't have troops to take care of that. But it's fine. I'm gonna just recruit independent company. That will be just twice of our force limit. Deal with rebels, enter and just delete this company. I checked. Muscovy provinces won't be able to be court before 1500. And for the big blue blob, you need to have court provinces, not owned provinces. This is why I'm gonna go and peace out Muscovy ASAP. So I'm just gonna go and rush down Moscow. And then I'm gonna go and take down Moldavia and Croatia in order to get the needed provinces. To do that, I'm first gonna go to Constantinople. I'm gonna concentrate the development here. Look, it's 93% of progress. Now it's 101, so I'm gonna automatically next them in the month tick. There it goes, very beautiful. That also gives me their troops, which is gonna be very helpful. Okay, so Mr. Muscovy, I only want a white piece from you. So I can take my troops, <laughs> most importantly, delete this mercs to save money, and go after Moldavia and Croatia. For that, I'm building Spine Network, and it, we need to hurry up with that. Emperor demands low countries from Burgundy. I guess I don't care, let's just use it. Now, declare on Croatia. This is gonna be a little bit easier goal. I'll take 10 provinces from England. Let's actually take one more province, make it 320. No, let's uh, leave it this way. 10 provinces and send the piece. Now I need to start calling those princes right away and go and focus on fighting the guys in the Balkans. We are, by the way, having 186 provinces. Okay, another three provinces coming from Moldavia right now. Sick. Let me also take one, two, three, four provinces from Croatia because I don't have more mana than that to core them on time before 1500. Annexation of Scotland just ended, which will be useful to deal with these rebels. And we are at 205 provinces right now. Just we need to core a couple of more of them before 1500. Yay, we just became the Papal Controller in 1497. 
Yes, yes, very helpful. Minus 20% guess, expansion, but a little bit late. December 1499, okay? We have in total 205 provinces. If we take a look over here, you'll see that we have one, two, three, four, five provinces that are not court yet. It means that we have exactly 200 court provinces and th those two will even finish by 1st of January. So that's gonna be, in fact, 202 by January. And it might seem that this campaign is completely ruined because I went too far for all of those provinces. Let me show you the players map mode. We have 1.7 thousand great power score, 1.6 thousand on development. But you can see that even though I have 18 out of 20 loans taken, I still can get a positive balance. And if I was to continue this campaign, that would be very easy to fix it because I would just start conquering the more important provinces from England to get the trade centers, move my main node to English channel and start taking everything towards it. Then clear the borders over here to get also trade power from these places. Clear the borders here, clear the borders here, slowly conquering Europe, maybe even getting the Roman Empire, so it's not a problem. Finishing the ideas, of course, to get even more bonuses, getting a bigger force limit, getting a better amount of manpower, but in my opinion, it's not ruined. We have manpower, we have money, we have force limit, we don't have rebels, we have everything court, so this is just perfect. So guys, if you enjoyed this type of challenge video, let me know by liking this video, and if we hit 5,000 likes, I'm gonna do a Florence into Italy speedrun, making this nation absolutely broken. If you like true EU4 challenges, you're gonna definitely like the 1.7 million income run that I did some time ago as Aragon.